Terror had struck London on Black Friday as a lone attacker went on knifing spree at a London bridge, claiming the lives of two people and injuring three others. Police say the attacker was 28-year-old Usman Khan, who was convicted in 2012 in a plot bomb to, in fact, the London Stock Exchange. He was, however, released in December last year on license on the condition of wearing an electronic tag. The police assistant, Commissioner of Indian Origin, has briefed the ongoing investigation following the London Bridge attack. Officers from London Counter-Terrorism Command have been working flat out with security services overnight, as you would expect, to continue to try and establish the full circumstances of what's happened. At this time, we found no evidence, no evidence to suggest anybody else was involved in this attack. However, we're still making extensive inquiries to ensure that no one else was involved. Our investigative priority at this time is to ensure that there is no one related as an outstanding threat to the public. The investigation team is also speaking to many of those who were present at Fishmonger's Hall. But I would appeal to anyone who was there on Friday, anyone who hasn't been spoken to, to contact police on 0800 789 321 immediately. We have accessed uh, the documents related to Usman Khan's conviction back in 2012 and here is the main excerpt. On 15 December, Usman Khan was monitored while in conversation about how to construct a buy bomb from a recipe referred to in an Al-Qaeda publication. And then on 19 December, the London def defendants were engaged in experimentation using the pipe bomb. It was this development that prompted their, their arrest on the 20th of December. All the accused, including Usman Khan, were found guilty of engaging in, con in fact, behavior and conduct in preparation for acts of terrorism and conspiracy to cause an explosion. The attacker's release has now become a talking point. Civilians in the UK have uh, showcased great strength and courage. On your screens are the visuals of three men who took down the accused using a fire extinguisher and the tusk of a narwhal. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson visited the crime scene. Yeah, we'll keep our distance. Yeah. He issued a statement assuring people that they are now safe. Listen in. We had a long uh, discussion already today about all those. Uh, cases uh, and uh, the, a great deal of work is being done right now to make sure that the public is protected and everyone. I want to thank you know, the security services as well for the outstanding job that they do. And don't forget, just a crucial point, for every incident like this, terrible as it is, there are many, many that are thwarted. There are many uh, prospective terrorists who are intercepted and prevented by our fantastic police and fantastic security services. He praised the police personnel and civilians for their presence of mind and bravery. He said that the objective of terrorists is to disrupt our lives, which makes it important for the people to remain happy and cheerful. Listen. Some uh, amazing uh, heroism from people using their initiative in relation to finding uh, a weapon, a device to try and uh, de-weaponize this man who had uh, two knives and a suicide uh, bell. I just make this point in seriousness, which is those uh, ordinary citizens who acted in an extraordinary manner, those police officers who responded so swiftly had no idea whether the device this man had on him was a real device or was a hope, but also they had no idea what other weapons this man had on him. What they did know is this man had one extremely large knife and another knife, and uh, they improvised in relation to trying to uh, take the weapons off him and stopping him harm uh, others, uh, whether it's using a fire extinguisher, whether it's using a, a Wells Tusk, or whether it's using other devices. And I think what we should do is reflect on the fact that these people ignore all the advice that they're given, which is to run away from danger, uh, to look after your own safety, and instead ran towards danger to make sure others uh, were safe. And I'm just so incredibly proud as the mayor, and I think all of us should be proud of what our fellow citizens did yesterday, including the police.
Meanwhile, Queen Elizabeth sent sympathies to families of those who have been killed in the incident. UK government has announced that the country's flag on government buildings would fly a half-mast during the day. This will be done to honour the victims of the attack. This attack comes at a time when Britain has downgraded its terror threat level from severe to substantial. In the aftermath of the London knife attack, there are multiple questions that remain unanswered. Who is Usman Khan and why was he at large despite being a convicted terrorist? And what does this entire story say about the British police forces who have been receiving some criticism as of late? Usman Khan spent his teenage years in Pakistan where his family owned some land. In 2010, Khan along with his accomplices were arrested by the police over multiple charges related to terrorism. They were accused of hatching an Al-Qaeda-inspired plot to bomb the London Stock Exchange. But this was not his only plan. Khan had in the meanwhile travelled to Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas with a plan to raise funds for a terrorist military training camp in Kashmir. To this end, he was planning ways to raise funds and start recruitment. They also had uh, intensive exposure to Al-Qaeda documents on pipe bombs and had held extremely hostile views against the Jewish community. All this information was documented at the Woolwich Crown Court, which uh, ultimately sentenced to Smang and his accomplices. The plan was to leave the UK in January 2011, but they were arrested two months before the scheduled date. Usman Khan was just 19 when he was arrested and the youngest among his accomplices. The anti-terror police had flagged him as a potential threat and had raided his address in stroke on tent. I've been born and bred in England, in stroke on Trent in Coveridge, and the older community knows me. And they will know, if you ask them, they will know, like these labels, what they put in on, like terrorists, this, that. They will know, I ain't no terrorist. He was not supposed to be released uh, unless deemed no longer a threat. But in 2018, this condition was lifted and Khan was released with an ankle monitor. Was this a lapse on the administration's part? Now, here are some deciding factors on that. The then police deputy assistant commissioner... Stuart Osborne called Usman and his gang highly dangerous individuals who were planning to cause serious casualties. Their targets included the Stock Exchange, the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral, two rabbis and then London Mayor Boris Johnson. In 2010, almost 1,000 police officers and the National Counterterrorism Forces were involved in the gang's capture. This brings us to present day. Usman Khan lived in a place called Staffordshire, almost 240 kilometers away from London, Khan was reportedly given permission to attend the prisoners' rehab conference near London Bridge, as it would turn out. The administration failed miserably in, in fact, gauging their convicts' behavior. 